Hey, Wayward Sons and Daughters, welcome back to the Winchester Report, a Southgate Media Group podcast dedicated to all things related to Supernatural over on the CW. I am Lilith, and joining me as always is... Jenny. Up for discussion today is episode 1113, Love Hurts. <sighs> I'm just going to be really real with y'all and tell you I didn't like this episode. I I wasn't a big fan of it either, to be honest. I don't know. This this was the definition of filler, with the exception of the end scene. Like you just that you just can't build an episode on what they did and then try to be like, oh, but now the secret's out. So this episode was totally worth it, right? That's all I'm saying. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't worth it. Um, they kind of gave us an interesting quote-unquote monster i guess but they totally ripped off it follows it happens to be one of my favorite uh movies from last year i'm a big horror fan and ugh, i was i just got so mad <laughs> i just got so mad i got irrationally mad about them using it i'm just like god i hate you oh and, and I can kind of get why I don't like this episode. Um, it was written by Eric Carmelo and Nicole Snyder. Their episodes usually are very bland. The dialogue is very uh, box cookie cutter. And uh, this episode was directed by Phil Secrecia. He, he usually does an okay job, but if the script's not anything phenomenal, I mean, it's only so much you can work with. And I found the guest actors acting really bad bad and flat like it it was just horrible it was like i was watching a a a b level kind of horror movie and that's just not what supernatural should be so those were my problems with the episode what were your problems with the episode jenny my problems were again super duper filler until the end and they kept pushing dean mara which i know a few weeks ago i shipped this really hard but now i'm like um, no. Now it's clear that, you know, Dean has no control about it. Yeah. So that's kind of icky in and of itself. Totally agree. <sighs> I don't, I don't know. Um, how did you feel about the monster of the week? Uh, not the witch, because we've had witches always with the witches. I'm so much on Dean's side when it comes to witches at this point. But the Korean was an interesting concept. I like the Korean. Of course, because it's kind of this weirdly, oddly religious kind of thing that they kind of twisted and totally kind of muck it up. But there you go. I don't know. I, I just don't know when it comes to the lore anymore on Supernatural. I think it would have been cooler if it, if it would have just been a gin or something. Or a shapeshifter. Uh, I'm over the shapeshifters on Supernatural. Like, we, we just have way too many seasons and the, and like the the canon of the, the monsters just keeps getting wonkier and wonkier which just annoys the hell out of me so I mean a gen we haven't seen that many times and so uh I, I just thought that that would be better than kind of twisting this religious thingy into the way that they did but that's just me personally yeah. uh but still cool concept I just really 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 wish they hadn't ripped off it follows like I just can't even with this. <laughs> I think I'm going to actually have to rewatch that movie just to, like, see how many similarities there are. It's not really that many similarities. It's just the monster and the way that it transmits. And then once that person dies and it goes, you, like, you have to keep the cycle going or whatever. Like, I don't know. Like, It Follows is just too fresh of a horror movie for them to be kind of, like, taking from, I think. Is what bothers me. Like, let it be out for a couple of years. Yeah. It's kind of like when they did um, the werewolf with the with the college kids or whatever. Uh, and it was just kind of basically like Chronicle. I was just like, oh, yikes. And then, like, they tried really hard to incorporate the Valentine's Day theme. And I'm just like, I, I could have just rather used another Thanksgiving or Christmas episode. Thanks. Yeah, like, I... This, this isn't even that much of a Valentine's Day episode. And guess what they could have done with that deep, Deepest Darkest Desire thing? Oh, don't you say it. DCL. <laughs> it, it was kind of messed up when she was like, yeah, I can see all this shame in your heart. And I'm like, oh, God, the DCL shippers are just going to be like off the rock. <laughs> I already knew it. I already knew it. Oh, they, they, they love to bait the fans. They do. They really do. They enjoy it. They, I think they get off on it personally. Ugh. 
I don't know, but the brother scenes were really good. That's like the saving grace of this episode. The three that we got were really good, but it's, it's a mess. And we saw Amara again after not seeing her for God's sister only knows how many weeks. Well, and it wasn't even really her. That's that's the thing that really irks me. And I was just so with Dean. Like, well, if it's not Amara, I don't want to talk about the case. <laughs> that's how I feel at this point. It's like something should be getting done here. We are over the halfway point. Cast is mission in action. I haven't seen Crowley. And I'm just like, I'm just having my boys withdraw. Like, I need my J2 M2. So, uh, but, you know, uh, the boys do need time alone. I understand that. And I did appreciate it when they weren't having to deal with the case. I mean, honestly, I would have just been more than happy to have the boys have an off day. I'm just saying. Didn't have to do a case. Um, oh my gosh, we should have an episode with them just having an off day to see what they do on their free time. I'm saying. Like, we, we get these little tiny glimpses and hints, but then... No, I just, I really think we need to do something different. It's season 11. That's all. Uh, let's see. What else can we talk about? Too bad we didn't get to see Sam, Sam's uh, deepest, darkest desire. It'd just be a dog at this point, right? <laughs> I think it might be Gabe. Oh! Sabriel! Oh, God! <laughs> I, I I don't I can't even function with this this episode right now. I apologize to you guys. Uh, I found the choice of uh the t- episode title kind of funny. You know, love hurts. It's that old timey song. Uh, I know it from the Nazareth, but I know they covered it from somebody else. I can't think of who it is right now. Oh, the Everly Brothers. But then like we also heard that song in like what was it six fourteen? Uh, which was also written by uh Eric Carmelo and Nicole Snyder. So maybe that's their thing. I don't know. God, 614 was so terrible. That was Mannequin 3, The Reckoning, for those of you who don't know that off the top of your head. Just Oh my gosh, terrible. Yeah, I know. Like, this wasn't a horrible episode. It was just very bland, I guess. It just made me want to go watch It Follows. It's like literally the only thing this, <laughs> this episode did for me. I liked all the Easter eggs in this episode. The Easter eggs were really cool. One of them was a copy of the Heart of Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill. That's a book. It's like on the coffee table when Stacy's watching TV. And then all the TV shows she was watching, I was like, oh my God, that's your pretty face is going to hell. That's Neon Joe Werewolf Hunter. Oh my God, they've got Rick and Morty on Supernatural. And it was really funny because all the episodes uh, revolved around the concept of love because, duh, it was Valentine's Day in the universe. So I thought that that was really cool. Do you watch any of those shows? No. No. We also got a Fifty Shades reference, and I'm just like, oh, God. Ew, Fifty Shades. That's abuse. Yeah, don't even get me started. It, it's like, I don't know. It, it's so weird and random that the stuff that they throw in. But Dean's alias, what got, I got a little chuckle because they're getting really obscure at this point with these uh, references for a lot of people. Adrian Weller is a reference to Paul Weller from uh, the English bands, The Jam and uh, Style Council. And I was just like, wow, we are digging really deep in our repertoire at this point. And it made me chuckle. Dean actually won rock, paper, scissors. Like, that was my favorite, hands down favorite moment of the episode. But it destroys my headcanon that Dean always lets Sam win because he, does, he doesn't he does want Sam to do the really dangerous. So, yeah, that's been my headcanon. I think now he's starting to, like, see Sam is an adult. Sam can do the dangerous stuff sometimes. Obviously, he can't. All he does is get flung in the walls and and restrained by the bad people but he did he did redeem himself this episode i mean i think they're finally getting past that trope definitely but i don't i mean it was really cute when dean won rock paper scissors but sam was all frustrated like man i don't want to do this this is your job dean what else uh uh, we learned that uh, Daisy Duke is Dean's supposed deepest, darkest desire. I don't buy that in the least bit, considering the kind of porn he watches. Castiel! 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 Oh, God. I'm just saying we're like K-I-C-K-I-N-G-A-S-S. <laughs> oh, but yeah, that was funny. I was just like, Daisy Duke, eh? Um, what else do, what else happened in this episode? Oh, yeah, the chick that played Sonya played, uh, that Venus chick from, um, no, wait. 
played a jo- Joanna from um, something Wicked, which was like way back in season one, uh, one eighteen. So the tail end of the season. Oh wow, season one, it's a million years ago. Yeah, I don't know how actors live in Vancouver. It is so damn cold up there, like seventy five percent of the time. What was the deal with the previously on? Uh, previously on, I'm just like, I don't think Samayane had really anything to do with this, but oh. Okay. Yeah, as well as, like, in the beginning of the episode. We, like, saw them focus on the nanny cam twice. And I'm like, how is this going to be relevant? Well, no, I mean, I guess that that's how people... That's, like, the old... Like, people don't even use the teddy bear nanny cams anymore. Like, honestly, unless you're, like... I don't know, like, really, really, like, first starting out or something. Because there's just better systems than that. And I, everybody knows to look for the teddy bear with the messed up eye. Everybody knows it. If I were to ever get a nanny cam for any reason, get one that's in an alarm clock. Because you never check the alarm or a clock. smoke detector. <laughs> just saying. Come on, get with, or in the DVR player. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. As well as in the DVR player would actually be a smarter place to put it. Because... Then you can see if the babysitter's just being lazy and watching TV. Exactly. Exactly. (sighs) So, to any of you new parents out there that might be listening to this, pay attention to that previous segment. (laughs) Oh, God. It was... I don't know. I was hoping for shapeshifters, honestly. I like shapeshifters in the supernatural universe. Hell, I would have settled for werewolves, even. (laughs) I don't know. Yeah, I, I was hoping for a shapeshifter too. Like, I, just, I haven't seen one in a while. I just want like a throwback episode. Like I feel like this season right now is channeling channeling like season four and five, but kind of like the worst parts of season season four and five that I didn't like because those two happen to be two of my favorite seasons. So, how about we resurrect Bobby? Well, it, it's coming. Bobby and Rufus are coming in like episode what one uh, eleven sixteen or something like that. <laughs> So obviously it's a flashback episode, which I don't think we've really actually technically done. Or maybe they're in heaven raising hell. Who even knows at this point? <laughs> in heaven raising hell. <laughs> Cause oh my god. If that's like if that's what they're doing, then they should actually title the episode that. <laughs> in heaven raising hell. That would actually be really awesome. Oh god, I miss Kevin. I miss him so much. Anyway. Oh my gosh, you, okay, then you're definitely going to want to watch the thing that I'm going to say for like, do you have any fan art, fan fix, fan songs, fan stuff in general that you want to recommend? <laughs> I just recommend everybody go watch Fun Saws, apparently. <laughs> but anyway, oh, so yeah, let's go to get into it then. Uh, who was your favorite character in this episode? Mm, my favorite character was... I, I'd have to say probably Sam. Me too! I love yeah. non-judgmental Sam. He's the best. Yeah, as well as Sam is finally doing the more dangerous thing. Well, Dean's allowing him to grow up finally after like 30 years. <laughs> yeah, Dean. He's not a baby. <laughs> He's my baby, but that's a whole different thing. But <laughs> Yeah. Um, I totally agree. I, I really love Sam this episode. Uh they really had Dean being like overcompensating in, in his machismoism, and I just I hate it. I I hate it. I hate it when they do that. It really irks the hell out of me. Dean felt really one dimensional. And I just don't like that because Dean's so much, there's so much more to Dean than that. And a lot of the writers just in this batch of writers just really, I feel like don't know how to write Dean as a continuing, ongoing, growing character. They kind of stunt him for seasons at a time and it just frustrates me. Yeah. As well as like, Either they, like, legitimately don't know how to write Dean. Like, come on. I I had an ongoing theory that for a lot of the male writers that Dean is just kind of like, they they can basically insert themselves into that character. And I think that's why he comes off out of character a lot of the times are very stunted and immature. Um, 
Yeah, I'm Batman. <laughs> exactly. Everybody did well, that. Well, that was adorable because that was earlier on in the series, like really early. Yeah. Are you surprised they even remember that? I feel like somebody sat them down and said, hey, you guys really need to go watch the first five seasons of Supernatural because you guys are destroying the show. Uh, you need a refresher course on what these boys are about, what they've been through. Because it's obvious to me that they really are recycling and um, taking bits and pieces from the older season before Kripke left. And, you know, that that's when it worked the best for me personally. So I don't have a problem with it, but I think that they need to be more creative about it. Yeah, instead of like just, oh, here's like a mix of three different Kripke plots. Exactly. And that's exactly what we kind of have going on here. And it's just like... Kripke plot stew. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. I love it. Yes, that's exactly Yes, what tweet us with hashtag Kripke plot stew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah. Um, what was your favorite character interactions? Dean and Fa- False Amara. Falmara. <laughs> yeah, Falmara. Um, I think it's uh Sam and Dean at the end of the episode where Dean basically finally comes clean and Sam's just basically like, So what, bro? I got your back. We got this. Uh yeah. don't worry about it. <laughs> I was just like those are my boys all grown up. They're not even punching each other. I don't think they've once punched punched each other or like done any harm to each other this season oh my god i think you're absolutely right which is oddly refreshing <laughs> we need to rewatch the whole season and no season. you can't make me <laughs> this season started <laughs> off pretty good but like there's so much filler in this season baby <laughs> well that's never a filler that needed to happen <laughs> We need to make the Impala a human. Yes, that totally still needs to happen. <laughs> it's still on the on the on the supernatural fan bucket list, and I really feel like that might happen next season. Hopefully. Oh my god! What if they make the baby a human, but then it's like John Barrowman? <gasps> he is on the CW now. <laughs> that could actually happen because. Yeah, that, that's something I want to see. And I just want him to see him, like, sort of acting like Captain Jack Harkness. <laughs> Who doesn't? Who well, I mean, doesn't? I'm, I'm Pan, so representation. <laughs> <laughs> also, Deadpool was confirmed pansexual by the director. I'm not sure if that's relevant, but I just wanted to point that out to people, because everyone needs to hear it. Yeah, then you got the people that are in denial. So, you know... <laughs> That's why everyone needs to hear it. Uh, Deadpool is a great movie, by the way. I saw it yesterday. <clears throat> I'm probably going to be seeing it on Tuesday. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, do you have a favorite scene? Probably the the idiotic Dean Mara, because like we hadn't seen Amara in so long. Even if this is a false Amara. <laughs> um, I think mine is... Ooh, that's a toughie. I know the end scene, I like it, but I feel like it was overdue. And it was also undercut by Dean confessing to uh, Cassifer. So I have mixed feelings about that scene. So I'm going to say I like the beginning where Sam was being totally judgy. He's like, is that a hickey? Because I literally said it at the same time. Like, oh, yeah, it's Valentine's Day, unattached drifter holiday, whatever. Like, I really wish he had said that. That would have really put this episode a little, notched up the grade a little bit. I mean, if we're going to do, like, you know, parallels and callbacks, that is, like, actually the perfect callback to use for this episode. So, missed opportunity. Uh, did you find anything anybody said funny or amusing or disturbing? Mm. No, this episode was so freaking filler that I couldn't focus on it. 
um, I think um, it had to be something that made me cringe, but kind of laugh at the same time. Uh, Sam's like, so this curse is transmittable? It means like, yeah, like a magic STD. Okay, that works. Kind of makes you nostalgic for good old fashioned herpes. And then like the the um, victim of the week kind of looks up and it's just like, oh my God, what the hell? Yeah. And speaking of herpes, you do realize four out of five people that have it don't know they have it because they show no symptoms. Nine out of ten people actually have some sort of no symptoms showing herpes. So if you're sexually active and you don't have it, you're the weird one. Wow, we're like really um, doing all these PSAs today. <laughs> yes. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. Also, oh. Oh, you go first. I was going to say, also, witch killing bullets, to which Dee says, we got to come up with a better name than that. And I'm like, yeah, we do. Mm. I need to be able to somehow combine the words witch and killing. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> uh, or how about witch we get- chillers! Witch <laughs> chillers! How about we stop being lazy and smashing words together? God, I hate, I hate Portman do. I hate it. I hate the English language. We suck. Yeah, did you realize, like, the word blush is a contraction of, like, blood rush? And I wouldn't yes. be surprised if studying is a contraction of student dying. <laughs> yes, I'm pretty sure that's what it actually is. <laughs> Yeah, as well as homework was actually invented as a punishment. Yeah, teachers are, some teachers can be real tools, but most teachers are underpaid and underappreciated. Yes, especially public school teachers. Especially public school teachers. <laughs> um. So yeah, let's see. I think I did all the Easter eggs. Uh, do you have a favorite moment? Again, Dean and Amara, even though I don't ship them, and it was a false Amara because it's just been so long since we've seen anything from her. What do you think she's doing? Gathering an army of ice jo- of ice zombies from Game of Thrones. She's stealing HBO's ice zombies. Well, hell, we, we really do shout out HBO a lot on this show uh, since season seven. So I actually wouldn't be surprised. Or maybe they're doing some Walking Dead type stuff. I don't I don't even know. Like, I have no idea what the second half of the season is going to be about. I mean, we need to get a, a, a move on. Yeah, stop it with the fillers. We're going to be so rushed at the end. It's going to piss me off. Gah! I don't know. I hope next week is better. Probably will be. Is is Cass back? Cassifer. Yeah, Cassifer. And I I don't know. I like avoiding spoilers for the next week until like the night before. Yeah, I don't do spoilers for Supernatural, so I don't know what's going on. I like to just be surprised and take it as it comes because when I watched but when I was like a spoiler junkie, it really ruined it for me because I was expecting so much more than what they actually gave me nine times out of ten. That it just frustrated me. So yeah, I guess we can talk about the grade then. This is the first time I'm going under a five. What? But I actually can say, yeah, first time I'm going under a five. But I'd actually have to say a four on this one because it was just so disgustingly filler. Wow. I thought I was harsh with my 6.3. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's because, like, this is the filler. Like, if this was, like, right after a main plot episode, it might have gotten a six for me. But there's just so many fillers in a row, and I just can't. Yeah, I understand that. So I'm taking it out on episode 13. I'm sorry, episode 13. Ah, uh, yeah. I can totally see that. For me, it's still a six, because like I said, the the brother moments kind of saved it for me. Uh, everything else, I could have just kind of left on the cutting room floor. It was it would have been okay to have like a 10-minute episode at that point. Yeah, although I don't know what I would have done with 50 minutes of my life. 
I mean, besides my homework, but I never do my homework anyway. <laughs> God, your mom's gonna kill me. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much all we have for you guys. It is time for some fandom stuff. So what do you have for us this week, Jenny? I am going to actually, for the first time, point out something that isn't Dis- Destiel. <laughs> okay. The Hollywood show's Supernatural parody, if you want to see some season 10 goodness again. And the reason why I specifically like mentioned what I was going to recommend when you said Kevin is because the actor that plays Kevin is playing Sam in this. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, God. I'm trying to still decide. I'm just going to go ahead and go with um, Blue Eyes by Too Many Fanfics You Ass. Um, this one is on fanfiction.net. It's a high school AU based on, of course, a Tumblr post. <laughs> Cause I still love Tumblr, even though it's starting to Tumblr. be a corporate nightmare. <sighs> but yeah, this is. A I love story. scrolling through the depths of hell at three in the morning. Me instead too. Instead of doing my homework. <laughs> Um, well, it was updated uh, yesterday, so, you know, that's always a big plus for me. Uh, it's got 16 chapters, and it's about 25,000 words at this point. Uh, they update about every two to two months, so, you know, that's always good to know. So get in on it, and uh, go check it out. Of course, the link will be in the show notes for both these things, as well as on the Facebook so, uh, if you are a fanfic writer or a fanfic of oh, a fan artist, uh, please be sure to send your submissions to us at uh, WinchesterReport at gmail.com or you can tweet it to us at Winchester Report. Um, or you can direct message it to us on facebook.com forward slash Winchester Report. So, yeah. Um, shameless plugs. Yep. You go first this time. Oh, okay. Well, you can find me on Twitter at Lil Hellfire. I am on Tumblr. My URL is it's lilhellfire.tumblr.com. I write for one of three websites, uh popculturepostmortem.com, lilhellfire.com, and of course spoilertv.com. So if you're looking for a place to uh check out my reviews, that's where you can find me. Um, I am on Instagram now, and I've actually changed my username. Imagine that. (laughs) Which is something I, like, never do unless it's Christmas. Then I will add the word jolly in front of it. Um, DaveCat underscore Shipper 1123. (laughs) Because I ship DaveCat, and if you are a Homestuck enthusiast and want to ask me which, which club suit I ship it with, I ship it red. Which card suit? It's of- so sad. I get it. And I have never even read Homestuck. It's sad because I get it because that's how much time I've spent on Tumblr. Yes. Um, I am on Snapchat. Scorpion underscore fan. One, one, two. No, one, two, three. Tumblr is mythical super pans 22. And Twitter is queer underscore llamacorn. <laughs> I um, want to remind you guys to be sure to check out SouthgateMediaGroup.com to see our full list of 80 plus and always growing podcasts. We have everything from anime to wrestling and everything in between. Including like three different Game of Thrones podcasts. Which and is- like three different Flash podcasts. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Why? Variety is the spice of life is Why? <laughs> So I um, want to remind you guys to please rate, review, and subscribe to us on your favorite podcatcher service of choice. We are on SoundCloud. We are on Lisbon.com. We are on uh, Stitcher as well as iTunes. I uh, look forward to it. And I just want to announce that I'm going to be really busy this week because I finally got all my Supernatural uh, novels. I found them in my storage bin and I want to reread them all, plus the comic books. So... I'm going to be busy this week. I'm going to enjoy my old school Supernatural. What about you? What are you doing Supernatural-wise this week? 
besides reading Destio fanfic? <laughs> Nothing really. <laughs> okay, fair enough then. Well, this has been Lil. And this is Jenny, signing off.